This is a Doctor Who Adventures variant for Doctor Who Exterminate that I'm trying, starring uh, the Tenth Doctor, Donna, and Wilfred. Today they're going to be navigating a hedge maze, trying to find three objectives and returning to the gazebo in the center because I'm sure if they have all three components they can activate some device or something. But I have a random table for rolling each turn to see what shows up in terms of enemies and we'll see how it plays out. Turn one nothing happens. I'm going to treat the squares on this map each as two inches because it's kind of a smaller map than a normal table would be. So I think I'm going to have them split up. Uh, I'm going to have the doctor go this way by himself. So his movement is with a sixth movement he'll be able to move three spaces. So one, two, three. He's going to get ready to move through that brush there. Um, Donna and Wilfred are both two, so Wilfred's going to move up two, and Donna two. And that ends the movement phase. Now we'll go into the shooting sub-phase. So the doctor is going to try and run through this down brush here. He succeeds. One, two, three. And then Donna, one, two. I'm going to allow diagonals, I think, because of the abstraction. One, two. And so there's no melee combat in turn one, so this is where we end up. Turn two starts. I'm going to roll to see what shows up for Cybermen. We get one Cybermat shows up. And I rolled randomly to so have it show up at the top edge, so I'll put it right there. So round two is going to kick off. I'm actually going to roll for initiative here. I'll get a box. And I've got 30 successes. The Cybermen have none. So I'll going to start my movement phase with Wilfred. He's just going to try and stay as far away from that cyber mat as he can. And go down to Donna, who's going to keep working her way towards that objective there. And the doctor, one, two, three, moving towards that objective there. So now we'll go to the Cyberman's turn, whom all they have is that cyber mat has a speed of six, so I'll move three as well. One, two, three. And it's got its eyes on Wilfred. Now one of the uh, random adventure cards I had drawn for this game was the Centauran Blaster. I think it makes most sense for Wilfred to be carrying that. He seems to be the type that would, among those three, be willing to use it if needed. Although for the shooting subphase on turn two, I think I am just going to have him run for that objective again. Um, he can always turn and shoot that cyberman later. And Donna is going to run on the movement phase, as is, of course, the doctor. One, two, three. Okay. So the doctor's on this objective. I'm gonna roll a dice, and if it's a hit, he'll be able to collect it. And it's not, so he's gonna have to try again next round. For the Cybermat's shooting phase, he's going to move one, two, three towards Wilfred, which actually does put him into melee engagement range. Cybermat has Hunter, so in the melee sub-phase, he is going to move up to three, and he is going to attack Wilfred. So he does not have a melee weapon, so he's going to start with a base die of one. He gets a plus one for his card. Uh, set that there, maybe. And then he gets plus one because he's the one doing the charging. So we'll roll those three dice for the Cyberman. Wilfred, of course, doesn't have anything for melee at all. 
So he's just going to roll a single dice for fighting unarmed. And the result is a tie. The Cyberman does not succeed in hitting him. So he's going to back off. And that ends turn two. Round two. All right, round three starts. I'm going to roll to see if any new enemies show up. Uh, yes. Two and a sh Two and a shock symbol means a Cyberman is going to show up, and he's going to ambush a random character um, spawning right next to him. So I'll determine who that is. It ambushed Donna. So I put it, I'll put it right there within two inches engagement range of her. And of course it makes most sense to put him right in her path where she's trying to get to, too. All right, we're going to move into the turn three movement subphase. Um, actually, I better roll for initiative first. For the doctor, we have two successes. And for the Cyberman, we have done again. So the doctor get or one, I guess, but the doctor and company get to go first. All right, the doctor is going to try and take this. I, I don't know what kind of action that should take. There's no real system for actions in this. It's, you, you can either move, you can shoot, or you can melee, and then only in those correct subphases. There's no generic action step, so I'm just gonna say instead of his movement, he's going, well, no, because it was free when he first got it. I'm just gonna say once per turn, it's free, and he misses it again. Um, shoot. Donna is going to take this opportunity to run away. One, two. See if she can't put some distance between her and that cyber. And Wilfred over here is going to go one, two. And try and... Actually, you know what? One, two. He's going to try and shoot that uh, Cyberman instead. He... He's feeling a little more confident with a gun than he is trying with his fists. Alright, he's actually got five dice for that blaster rifle. And we have three hits since it's an energy weapon. Our Cybermat defends with two dice. And it doesn't get any hits. So we'll roll three damage. Ouch, it is shocked. Let me check my battle cards. Yeah, it's shocked. And actually, I believe that I should have waited till the shooting subphase. I think it was still a the uh, movement subphase. So for the rest of the shooting subphase, Donna is going to move again. And you know what? Let's have the doctor try again on this objective. Why not? finally succeeds in picking it up. So, uh, why not? Let's just treat it as a uh, vortex node. So the blue one gives you an extra movement. So that's one, two, three, just what he needed. Um, and that'll end the shooting subphase. So we'll move on to the melee subphase, which we won't have any... Oh, I forgot to move my Cybermen. Cybermen would have moved after Donna, which puts him in range of shooting her during the um, shooting subphase, but actually, uh, according with the adventure book, they prefer melee, so he's going to put himself within engagement range instead. So melee subphase, Donna's got hold back, so she's going to move herself a free move. Um, which doesn't actually take her outside of his range, does it? One, two. Okay. It's a fight. Donna versus Cyberman. All right, I'm going to have my Cyberman attacking with his just bare fists instead of the shock gauntlets. The... That's kind of messy, but the Cyberman Shot Gauntlets are start off with a base of two dice. 
Um, there's Errata saying that they should have the shock trait though, which means, or the, uh, the shock trait, yes, which means they can only stun people. So he's going to knock people out, so he gets two attacks anyway, so he's going to just attack with bare fists. So he's going to get one base dice for melee. He has plus five on his card. Puts him up to six. And then a seventh for being the uh, initiator of the card. It's not an energy attack. He gets three successes. Donna is going to defend with three dice. It's three successes. That is more than the uh, just the same amount as the Cybermen. So I'm going to play. You know what? I refresh these at the end of the round. I'm just going to play. Why not? Four hit combat cards. So I beat him by four, but I burned my entire hand of combat cards. But that means Donna is actually rolling four damage dice against the Cybermen. And we shock him. All right, we've shocked him, but we are still in melee. So I'm going to spend a story point to exterminate him from the game. Not sure narratively how that worked out. Um, maybe she appealed to his emotions and caused the computer overload or something. All right, that ends round three. We're moving into round four. Oh, wow. Another Cyberman ambush. So we're going to determine a random character for this Cyberman to jump. And wouldn't you know it, it was Donna again. Those guys are after her. Just after she defeats one, uh, another one bu busts through the bushes there after her. Eerie. Okay, turn four, movement subphase. Uh, let's dice off our initiative. The doctor gets one success, and the Cybermen get three. They are gonna go first this turn. Um, also, my Cybermat is no longer shocked, but he does keep his under fire token from when Wilfred shot the cannon at him, uh, meaning he cannot shoot, which won't really affect him too much, but if he takes another shot, yeah. So he can't move into an, he can't move any closer than engagement range. He's already uh, within engagement range. So he's going to stop there and not move. This Cyberman, same story. He's going to be standing by in engagement range. And then we'll move my heroes. So. Wilfred is going to move one, two. He wants to try and get towards that objective. Donna, of course, wants to run and get away. One, two. And the doctor wants to get out of this corner and go help people. So one, two. Ooh, there's a little bit of a gap there. Should I read that he can move through that if he uh, treat it like an obstacle? Sure. Three. So next turn he'll be able to roll a couple dice and see if he can move through those bushes. Okay, that leads us to the shooting subphase. Our Cyberman here has a cyber gun with a range of six or one, two, three. So he's not quite. Um, actually line of sight might be an issue here let's see here I don't think that ruler is completely blocked but she would definitely benefit from cover yeah I think he's gonna go chase her down one two uh, the Cybermat obviously going to chase Wilford down one two three And then the doctor is going to try and move through this. And he succeeds. So one, two, three. He's going to go after that Cyberman and try and help Donna out. I think I'm going to change how I'm doing engagement range and just call it the 
adjacent square at this point, otherwise it gets a little finicky. So that was the shooting subphase, and now we'll go into the melee subphase. Uh, the Cybermen get to go first, so we are going to have him move up, but then Donna is going to fall, hold back. Um, and then the Cybermat is going to do the same thing to Wilfred, but then Wilfred is going to fall back. I think I'm misreading how that works. Move up to two inches in any direction instead of engaging. But I think that only really helps if it is their initiative. But in this case, it's the Cybermen's initiative. So I don't think they can do that. So they are the ones being engaged and attacked. So let's roll some dice for Donna versus Cybermen. Here's the Cybermen rolling seven dice. Oh my, six hits. Madonna has three. Oh, no, this is melee. She shouldn't be looking at her defense. She's unarmed, so she gets one dice, and then she has a melee skill of one. So she's rolling two dice, not three. Um, counting strikes, two strikes. So that leaves four successes. Um, I think we're going to have to see what these four dice show. Two exterminates, a shot, and a nothing. So I am going to, at this point, play a battle card to reroll a couple dice. Actually, let's re-roll all three of these. Okay, that's not so bad. It's all shot. Um, so Donna's shocked, and our Cyberman gets a second attack, which he can use to immediately take her out. However, another fate point. Going to stand her right back up. Okay, he's burning through our fate, but he is going to attack again. Because he's got two. Um, and he's going to be minus one, I think, because he's already attacked. No, he's going to be plus one because Donna hasn't been attacked again. I'm just going to keep it the same. I'm not 100% sure. The rules are not super clear on some things. Um, he's not using an energy weapon, so he's got a total of three successes. Okay, two dice for Donna's defending. One success. That's two that need rerolled for damage. Let's spend a fate token to reroll this exterminate. Nothing happens to her. Except that we're now down to two fate tokens. Okay, Cyberman falls back. Cyberman versus Wolfred. All right, the rules say if engaged by an enemy miniature, it must subtract one combat die for each under fire token. Um, it doesn't necessarily say anything about if you were the model engaging, but I think I'm going to try and I think I'm gonna subtract one dice for it anyway, because it seems to make sense. So Cybermat's two dice. Okay, I won't even roll for Wolfred. Cybermat falls back. That ends turn four. I think I'm going to discard my hand of combat cards to earn back a fate point because I'm going to need those more than I'm going to need those ranged defense cards against the Cybermen. And we'll go into turn five. Okay, for the enemy spawning roll this time, I rolled four successes and a surge, which means I'm going to get a cyber leader with two cybermat swarms. So I'll roll a random table edge to bring them in. All right, so they've spawned there right next to the doctor, and on this edge, so I put them kind of close to 
Wilfred over there to be able to help flank him with that other Cyberman. I stepped up the difficulty a little bit in my spawning table from the last time I played and moved it to the beginning of the round instead of the, the end of the round, and I am definitely noticing a difference. It is quite a bit harder. I'm not sure if we're going to achieve our objective. I think our, I think our heroes might just need to see if they can get back to the center alive. And the Cybermen win the initiative roll for round five. So we're going to start off with a movement subphase. Um, this is a little bit narrow, but I think I can fit them both here to move them within engagement range. And I'm over here now because my battery on my phone's dying. So I think I'm going to call it there. It was kind of a fun game. Um, made it through five turns and it's kind of looking bad. We're running low on fate tokens. We still have wounds, but... The longer the game takes, the more those Cybermen are going to escalate and keep coming out at us. And I think I'm just going to call this one a loss. And, you know, from the fact that I had some fun with it, I think the, the stuff that I'm trying out seems to be working okay. And I think I'll keep experimenting with it. Um, even the, the, the grid map thing wasn't terrible. And the reason I like trying that is because... You know, you have such a limited selection of actual miniatures, terrain, and part of the fun of adventures in time and space is going to other places in time and space. And battle mats help me do that a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to keep seeing if I can figure out how to make that work intuitively and fun as well. So signing off for now. Hope you enjoyed.